Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was a, a horrible weekend. Quite, quite confusing, really. Kind of hard to, to understand. Hard to understand everything that was going on. I mean, what started out as a great week ended up anything but. And so in the end, there was really nothing left to do but go home. So they did. Heads hung low, kicking the dirt with feelings of pain and anguish and distrust, bewilderment with every step that they took. I mean, what else are you supposed to be doing? Everyone had gone into hiding. His closest friends, his companions, his followers scattered like the wind. Memories of that angry mob hurling insults, claiming enough is enough. If you are who you say you are, then, then do something about it. Just come down off of that cross. Save yourself. Save us. It was a horrible weekend. And so Cleopas and the other disciple headed for home. They had seen all that they had wanted to see. They had heard all that they had wanted to hear. Nothing had turned out as they had hoped for, and so they left. Seven miles they journeyed on foot to a place called Emmaus. It's only been, believe it or not, two weeks since that glorious day of resurrection. It was that day for Cleopas and the other disciple. For us, these two weeks could seem like such a long time ago, but it was that day for them. In fact, for us, the, the only thing that remains of any evidence of, of Easter is those licorice-flavored jelly beans still roaming around in the bottom of our Easter baskets. Maybe some Easter lilies that are struggling to survive. Cleopas and the other disciple headed to a place where they had hoped for some relative safety, security, a place that was more familiar, a place where they longed to find comfort for their weary souls, that place where they could just simply be alone in their misery. And so they headed to Emmaus. Can you tell me how you are doing two weeks later? Anybody here in these past two weeks bumped up against broken dreams, maybe empty promises? Anybody here in these past two weeks have you received news that was perhaps maybe a little less than what you had hoped for? Encountered any failures or frustrations along the way? Anybody? For me, 
these past two weeks have been a blur. That first week of Easter, I spent two days in Lincoln discussing things that, that would dramatically affect the lives, the livelihood of conference personnel. Things that I did not take very lightly. It left me with these feelings of being overwhelmed, feelings of anxiety, restlessness, knowing that, that what the Connecting Council had just done made decisions for how individuals, how families would be affected in the future of our conference. And the next day after that, after getting home, I leave for a VIM trip, traveling five hours, 290 miles to help four different families who had their lives disrupted by not one but three separate floods in a two-month period. They had lived their lives for seven months in various stages of disarray. Their homes were in need of repair. They longed for just, just a little glimmer of hope. A new way of being in this world to find their new normal. To say that I was tired, exhausted, when we packed up and left Friday afternoon, which it was 75 degrees there when we left Friday afternoon, just saying. I was ready to come home when we pulled out of that church parking lot. I was ready to come home when we left from this church parking lot a week ago today. back it up even further the two weeks of travel before that in Israel and Egypt and immediately getting on a train and traveling to Denver Colorado for three days of meetings now don't get me wrong all of this is good stuff but I was wiped out I longed to be home my Amaya out of our comfort zones, the busyness, the rat race of life, living life that is not within the normal limits. It is, it's, it's exhausting, confusing, sometimes frustrating. And the only thing that we want to do is just simply disappear, to get away from it all, to escape, to go home. Cleopas and the other disciple headed for Emmaus. You know that Emmaus literally means this hot place. Like anger, rage, a dark place. A place of extreme passion. Seven has always been a sacred, a holy, a divine number. I mean, there has always been significance in the number seven, the seven miles they traveled. Cleopas and the other disciple, they were frustrated. They were heartsick. They were feeling just a little bit hopeless. They were tired. They were discouraged, not sure what to do next, where to turn. And while they were walking along the way, Jesus shows up and walks with them. He shared God's grace with them. He revealed God's all-consuming love to them. I mean, we have all journeyed down these paths of disappointments and setbacks. We have all headed off to our own little Emmauses, our places of frustration and anger, rage, thinking that if we can just get away, we can leave it all behind. And what Luke is trying to tell us this morning is that when we do, when we head to those dark places, 
Jesus is going to show up. Barbara Brown Taylor, in her book, Gospel Medicine, writes, The blindness of the two disciples does not keep their Christ from coming to them. He does not limit his post-resurrection appearance to those with full confidence in him. He comes to the disappointed, the doubtful, the dejected. He comes to those who do not know their Bibles. He comes to those who do not even recognize him when he is walking right beside them. He comes to those who have given up, those who are headed home. Which makes this whole story, she says, a story about the blessedness of brokenness. You know, as much as I was wishing, as I was longing to be home, even before we left on that mission trip, I'm telling you, I needed that mission trip. I knew somewhere along the way I would encounter the risen Christ. I mean, Christ has always shown up for me in hearing the stories, encountering the lives of those who have been affected by the disasters. And I I wanted that. I needed that. But for some strange reason, as much as hearing the stories and meeting those families affected by the flood, it was powerful, great for me. It just wasn't there. Yes, Amy's and Passion thank you at the restaurant that night that the long-term recovery committee bought our meal, fed us. Shirley's off-camera gratefulness that afternoon that the television crew showed up. It spoke to my heart, but it just wasn't there for me. Where I experienced Christ this week was in the 13 individuals who gave their time, their talents, their energy, their gifts, their service to four families who had been to hell and back. That is where Christ showed up for me. As we broke bread each morning and night through the devotions that each person shared, my heart burned within me. I could almost hear those words from Luke, those words that he wrote so long ago. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and opening the scriptures to us? I mean, Barbara Brown Taylor has it right. In the brokenness of life, it is then that you can be guaranteed Jesus is always going to show up. He will find a way to share his love, his grace, his compassion through those that have gathered around us. I cannot thank each of those 13 people enough for showing me Christ this week. In the brokenness of Jesus' own body, the offering of his own flesh and blood, could Christ take on the brokenness of this world, redeeming it, blessing it, and then allowing his resurrected body to be shared with others. That's what happened this week. Jesus did this because this is the way of life that God had shown him to show to the rest of us to take what we have been given whether it is the sweet satisfying bread of success or the tear soaked bread of sorrow bless it Barbara Brown Taylor says say thank you for it and then give it away all in order so that we can be made whole again Each of the 13 who joined together on this mission trip did that for me this week. They broke that bread. 
they shared Christ in so many different ways with me. I am pretty sure that Luke shares this little story about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus because each of us have experienced brokenness in some sort of way. Each of us have been met with disappointments, with pain, with disillusionments, shattered dreams, lost hope. We're tired, we're weary. But Luke is here to say that none of us have to travel to our little Emmauses all by ourselves. There is one who will meet us somewhere along the way. Travel with us. Taking all of that brokenness upon himself. So that we don't have to go alone. The crucified, dead, buried, risen Christ. Will always join us on the journey. Embrace us with God's powerful word. Give us the sustenance that our souls really need. The bread of life.